On the list of things that really scare me, heights, being tied up, or confined in a tiny place are at the top of the list. I just spent four very intense hours watching Houdini, and I loved it. Obstacle is death. I don't know if the History Channel is trying to compete with HBO for amazing miniseries, but if that's the plan, they are succeeding. With stars like Adrian Brody, Kristen Connolly, and Jim Collins, it's hard to fail. The costuming, the sets, the whole way they told the story really lived up to a high quality miniseries. While the era might be a little off, the whole film felt a lot like Water for Elephants in its color and styling and the effect of the movie. In this tale, Adrian Brody plays Harry Houdini. We learn about Houdini's childhood, which was magical because he had this one wonderful relationship with his mother, but it was also somewhat tragic because his father was abusive and mean and then he dies at a young age. And instead of just showing us simple tricks and the basic plot of the story, they use beautiful imagery to show how they did the trick. Like when he's performing for the Kaiser in Europe and he has the guy come down and shoot a bullet right into his mouth. Okay, I would have totally been fooled. There was no real baseline knowledge of this kind of trick, and so the level of amazement was over the top. The creators of this miniseries did a beautiful job of showing the relationship between Houdini and Bess. You feel that he was in love with her at first sight, and even though there's rocky parts in the relationship, they still stay firm and together, and the love lasts. One of my favorite scenes with her is when he's in the jail cell and he's gonna escape, and she kisses him for good luck and passes the pick into his mouth. But in addition to this love of his wife, Houdini has another love, and that's his mother. He makes her queen for a day. Yeah, I hope my sons are taking notes. When he does one particularly dangerous stunt where he jumps off a bridge into the ice water and he gets lost, he claims it was his mother that showed him the way back up. I will have one complaint, and that is that at every commercial break, I felt like my heart was gonna explode waiting for the next scene to come on and see if Harry makes it through his next trick. Of course, we all know he does, but still, I did this a lot through the episode. Be careful! But while he's in the heyday of his career, he gets recruited to do some espionage for the U.S. government. So when he travels overseas, he's doing reconnaissance work and magic acts, and he never tells Bess a thing about it. With World War I approaching, there were lots of key players at that time, the Romanovs, the Kaiser, and he performed for them all. One of my favorite acts is when Houdini and Mr. Collins set up their trick to ring the bell when they're in Russia. I had no idea how he had pulled that off with no electronic devices. And when they showed Mr. Collins up there with the gun shooting the bell, brilliant. Then he goes to London to meet Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Oil. Yeah, the one who wrote Sherlock Holmes. And they're convinced that it's not a trick at all, that he has some kind of spiritual power. And Lady Doyle is a clairvoyant. After the Doyles make this revelation to Houdini, it's not so long later that his mother dies. And he is beyond devastated. So devastated that he wants to communicate with his mother from the beyond. He spends his life tricking people, and then when people start to trick him, he does not like it. And tries to expose them. Because he wants to talk to his mother, and they shouldn't do that. So Harry starts going to seances to call people out on their spiritualism that's fake. And of Eventually, he lets Lady Doyle do a reading. He cries, and he believes her, and then he thinks about it later and realizes that there was no way it was his mother because his mother didn't speak English. So he calls her out and makes her a public example of bad clairvoyance. And he angers a lot of people. Eventually, one of Doyle's supporters comes to one of his shows, comes backstage, and punches him. And that imagery of his stomach being punched over and over again is brought back full circle. And the weirdest part is that his mother comes back to, like, guide him to heaven, but she kisses him on the mouth for a really long time. After the film is over, they show actual footage of his funeral, and there's this giant floral arrangement that says, Mother Love. Yeah. Definitely take the time to watch this miniseries, because you will not be disappointed.